Hey, it's Greg from Scholar Farms. Today we are talking about coffee and drones, two topics that I've always wanted to put together. I drink a lot of coffee here in the Bay Area where I live, and there are lots of shishi coffee shops around, but to be honest, I just go to Costco and I buy it by the multiple pounds. In particular, I've been buying this Fog Chaser Blend by San Francisco Bay Coffee Company, and recently I was able to go hang out with the Rogers family that runs the company, and we had a great conversation about drones, about managing agriculture all over the world, about the use of technology, as well as some really interesting stuff that they're doing for community development and investing in their farmers. And so with that, we'll cut to the conversation we had. I hope you enjoy. here north of Sacramento in Lincoln, California. Yeah, Lincoln, mm -hmm. uh, at the San Francisco Bay Coffee Company. We are talking about coffee, we're talking about drones, uh, agriculture with a specialty crop like coffee and what role the new technology can play. I'm here with Laura Rogers and, and Toby. Uh, Laura, why don't you tell us a little bit about San Francisco Bay Coffee Company, um, kind of brief history on, on uh, who you are and what your role is with the company, and then we'll talk to Toby a little bit more about the tech innovation um, and the role of drone technology. We've got a drone here on a coffee bag <laughs> with some sensors buried in some coffee. Uh, so Laura, what, tell me a little bit about the company. Sure, so I am part of the third generation of Rogers. Uh, my grandparents started the company in 1979 in San Francisco, hence where the name came from. We've been in Lincoln for 10 years now. We kept outgrowing facilities, so we're out here in the middle of nowhere. And it's a giant facility. It's huge. We could fly drones in this warehouse, and then there's like three more just like And we it. should. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been here 10 years. Uh, we are working on making the place bigger, on innovating, and uh, I do the marketing for the company. So social media, I'm uh, working on kind of bettering the brand and sure. raising awareness of who we are and what we do. Okay. And we've, we've been talking a bit about coffee plants mm -hmm. specifically. Um, you guys are working all over the world. Uh, tell me some of the countries that you're working in. Uh, we work in Panama, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Guatemala, uh, a bunch of different places. There's Mexico, Mexico, Hawaii in the US. Rwanda, of course, yeah. where we met. Yeah. Okay. And so one of the interesting things about coffee, specifically working in different locations, you're buying direct from the farmers, um, and so there's also different pick times that are harvest times that are staggered throughout the year. What challenge does that play in terms of just thinking about where your beans are coming from? Well, every country is different, so we have to align. Also, the picking season isn't always the same for each farm, so it's figuring out, making sure we have enough coffee for the whole year, figuring out how it all lines up and so that we don't run out. <laughs> yeah, totally. You got, and you guys supply, I mean, you're a big company yeah. in terms of what, what's kind of general figures of sales and, and who some of your biggest clients are. Uh, we've been selling to Costco for 35 years. We have an incredible relationship with them. So that's something that's always been very important to us. And uh, we have a big presence online in our e-commerce and we're working on raising awareness through our retail stores as well. And Toby, you're specifically interested in kind of innovation within the company in general, and that's kind of how we met thinking about drone technology. Um, what are some of the roles that drone could, like you see that drones could play in coffee, and what are some of the challenges that you're facing mm. right now? So the, the, the reason I believe that, that we've got something here that we can really use is, is I think we can increase uh, efficiency of our farms, and I think we can uh, increase productivity of our farms. How we do that, there's a, there's a multitude of ways of doing it, but getting up in the air, taking uh, either photos with a camera or a more complicated multi-spectral camera, or whether we're using different sensors, uh, to really gather data on that farm, 
Um, that's, that's the future, I think, in, in order of understanding what it is we're dealing with, trying to project and predict the future, and then utilizing that information and sort of downloading it into the mind of the agronomist. And then that agronomist being able to use it on the farm on a on a day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year basis. Yeah. So we've been talking a lot about this in the in the video blog of like how do you manage plant data. This is kind of the perfect example of the problem of the technology right now. Is like you have different farms growing different varieties in different countries with different rules at different times of year, and so managing that within teams and across teams and then at scale and then managing all the data and then trying to interpret it. Mm. Uh, that's an exciting problem to have, yes. but that's kind of where we're at in the yeah. industry today. Well, it, there's, there's a, a, a spectrum of, of how, how uh, detailed we get with it. Mm -hmm. So some of the DJI drones, the lower end DJI drones, uh, with some of the free apps that there are on the market right now can, can really get quite a long way into, yeah. into, into its utility. And then there's this sort of gap until you get up into the higher end the models and some of the more expensive sensors. Yeah. sensors. And then, so, so for $1,000, you can do 60% of what you wanna do, but if you wanna really fill that last 40%, you need to go up towards $15,000. And that's what we're trying to figure out with and, and deal with at the moment. Yeah, and I think you're not alone. I think there's a lot of people trying to figure out like what's worth the investment, quick and dirty for off the shelf platforms versus being more scientific and when do you manage uh, the more scientific side, and, and it has its role, but maybe also doing cheap and fast. Also. Yeah, and, and the, the role of um, companies like ourselves, a coffee company, uh, in, in the technological advancements that we're seeing is a, is, a, is a strange one as well. So do you rely on the tech companies to develop the tech, or do you rely on the client, basically, the, the, the farmer like ourselves, on developing the tech that they know that they need? So we're either waiting for the, the drone industry to develop the product that we want to buy from it, or we're developing it ourselves at our own cost. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the innovation that I'm proud that, that, we, that we are sort of getting involved with at the moment. Yeah, so super exciting things um, on the technological side, and hopefully we'll track more of that story as it de develops. But uh, one thing that I've been kind of very struck by as I've learned more about the company is thinking about precision agriculture is not just about a technological, it's not the digitization, it's also on the social side of things. So you have lots of a significant investment in social programs. Can you tell me a little bit about how that fits in uh, to your company profile and, and your beliefs uh, and core values as a company? Definitely, so this came from the very beginning. My dad has been buying coffee for the company from the time he was 20. Uh, so it's been a long time now. And that was very important to us from the very beginning to buy coffee directly from farmers. So we now work with 25,000 families and directly with from the farmers. So we actually go and visit them and we know who the coffee's coming from and we have relationships with them. Some of their kids is, have babysat me. So <laughs> it's long relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, we have made a point to pay above the market price for the coffee as well. Uh, it's fairly traded, fairly um, owned and fairly operated as well, as well. So we buy above market price so that we can provide and help them live a more healthy life. Uh, we've also been building schools, homes, medical centers, uh, dental centers, and the schools are something that is always very incredible to me, uh, building and furthering education. So. And it seems like you benefit both, like investing in the community also feeds back to people that are committed to your Absolutely. brand and to your company and providing a good product. And Definitely. Yeah. We can't have happy and healthy employees that are making a great product for our customers if they're not happy and healthy. So that was very important to us to start from the ground up and really we want to sell a product to all of our customers that we believe in and that we have people behind us. And I truly believe we have that. Yeah, and one thing that's really unique to hear is that when I'm thinking about um, precision agriculture, I'm thinking like on a pixel by pixel level. Yeah. And like the image of the, the farm is just one aspect and adding to that pixel data, to me, thinking about it from a data yeah. perspective, is that social consciousness and also the improvement of the the people that are working on the farm. Absolutely. It seems like that's a little different way of thinking about yeah. this as an ag. Well, to, to add to that, um, the, the, the vision with our innovation, so that, let's talk about the, the vision with our precision, uh, precision agriculture would be to increase the yield and increase the efficiency. But, but why are we doing that? We're doing that to increase the yield and efficiency of the coffee farmer who is farming the coffee for us. So yes, we're getting, we're getting the, the upkeep from that, but not just that, we're all, they're getting it. And so they're able to produce more, they can sell more to us, we're paying them more in the first place. And all that money and all of that development ends up going into 
their farm and therefore their lives and, and the, the schools that they go to and, and the houses that they live in. And, and we are really developing this, this family, the Rogers family, it starts there, but then what we're trying to do is, is develop the biggest family in the world. And uh, we're going to do that with innovation. We're going to do that with a with a social construct, and we're going to we're going to do that, looking forward and just trying to trying to make the best of the world that we were given. Yeah. So I am hoping to get some free coffee, uh, but, <laughs> but also it's you been might. really great for, for to have me out here, and I've I've had a great time. Um, I really appreciate your time, and, and Thank thanks you. for being on the channel. I'm Greg with Scholar Farms, and we'll talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.